three, two, one. All right, welcome back to the Educators Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Gutierrez. And today we have a special guest and I'm gonna let her introduce herself. So uh, right. my name is Carly Adams. Thank you so much for having me, Alex. I'm really happy to be here. Um, and I met Alex through my sister, Becca Montez, <laughs> who is a guest um, on a previous episode too. And uh, we, I live in Sacramento um, and I'm a professional organizer here. I've been in Sacramento for about, oh my gosh, almost four years and love it. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. That's cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, I had your sister on here and, you know, she was on episode one of the season, season two I actually ended up making a season just because I needed a break. I didn't know how to take a break from the podcast. So when I went to, uh, <clears throat> I went to Mexico for a couple of weeks during the winter break and I don't know. I just decided to like take a couple of weeks and then Becca hit me up and I was like, I guess it's time to start up again. You know, cause people were asking me like, Hey, can I get on? And I was like, oh, I didn't even know if I was going to like roll it out again. I don't know. I was starting to get a little lazy, but I'm glad that I'm back doing it. And uh, now we're steamrolling and we have guests lined up. So I appreciate your time though. I appreciate you coming on and, and um, being able to share your story and kind of tell us your experience um, through your business and what you're doing. So kind of tell me what, what what's a professional organizer. What is this? <laughs> Fair enough. I'm, a, I'm an amateur organizer and I'm failing at that so help me out with this. <laughs> so I get asked that a lot so basically I help people who either have too much stuff um, or maybe they don't feel like they have too much stuff but they they want to know more about how to keep things organized and how to have simple systems in their homes I help them through the decluttering process talking with them about you know my best practices for that and then also help them create those simple systems yeah because I'm, I'm kind of a hoarder and i think uh you know people say organize like I'm, I'm the worst but you know how everybody has like their level of organization like i could tell you where my stuff is at right but if you came to my house or you came to like look at my desk or whatever you'd probably be like where's you know i don't know it just looks different to everybody but i'm definitely like one of those people that have an issue with letting stuff go um mm -hmm. you know so that's probably my biggest issue with organization um how did you get into this whole field like of I'm going to help people organize. I mean, obviously, are you a very organized person? Did you grow up like always having your room super clean or what? No, I grew up <laughs> a very disorganized person. And every, every single aspect of my life used to be completely disorganized and like fairly chaotic. I had too much clutter. I had no systems. I was constantly rebuying things because I couldn't find where they were. Mm. Um, I was also doing a lot of like just kind of recreational shopping so I would buy tons of like, like lip glosses, nail polish, shirts that I never ended up wearing. It was basically that, you know, that thing of like, well, it's $7. Like, I'll right. just get it, whatever. Yeah. And then I had a house or a home filled with stuff that was, you know, inexpensive, but I wasn't actually necessarily like using it or caring about it. Um, and also my finances were a mess. And I know I've talked about it before too, but everything kind of really started with me realizing like, okay, I need to make a change. And I decided to get some advice on my finances and long story short, the person that I met with was really mean. <laughs> it was just <laughs> like, yeah, you're awful. And like, you don't know what you're doing at all. I'm like, cool. Thanks <laughs> for telling me the thing I already knew. Right. That makes me feel great. And um, I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to figure this out on my own. I'll need, I'll learn what I need to know. And it just took me down this really long rabbit hole of figuring out not only like financial stuff, but how to simplify, simplify things at home, how to um, create systems, how to declutter. Um, I was trying to save money. So I suddenly had all this time on my hands because I was trying to like you know, not shop recreationally, not necessarily go out like every single time I felt like it. So I was like, okay, what can I do around here? Well, I can declutter my whole home and right. um, just kind of went on this path, but I ended up like really falling in love with the process and loved it so, so much. Um, when we decided to move to Sacramento, I knew that I wanted to start my own business and I knew that I wanted to uh, be an organizer and basically teach people what I learned and what I had to kind of learn the hard way and through a lot of research on my own, like, let me help other people not have to go down a rabbit hole for 150 hours. So like, let me tell you everything I learned, the short version, so that you can skip all the mistakes, you can skip all the things that don't work and just implement the things that do. 
Yeah, I mean, it seems like a it's, it's it's a process, right? It can't be like overnight. You can't all of a sudden. I mean, yeah, you can organize your room one day, but I feel like like in order to keep it up or, or keep up your house in that decluttered form, right? You had to continue to like live it, right? It's like a, it's like a learning process, right? You have to continue to do it, right? Because it can't just be like you come in, you organize a garage, or for instance, like it could take one day to mess that whole thing up, right? That whole system of like you said, like not putting stuff away where it's supposed to be, or like you said, picking up things that you know, you're maybe like, you don't need, but you're like, oh, but it's so cheap. And you start to like mess up the whole system. So do when you, when you like got into this, like, how did you start and get your first client? Like, you know, it's obviously not something you, you know, can get a major, you know, at Sac State and learn decluttering. So how did you like get into like starting the business and actually, you know, making this a business? Fortunately, there's a lot of great resources available for people who are looking to become organizers. So oh, wow. It's, um, you know, I definitely learned a lot, um, not at the very beginning, because I launched in the fall, but the uh, 2017, but the following spring, I joined an organization called Inspired Organizer. And it's basically like a course for people who know that they love to organize, want to be an organizer, but they want to learn like the business end of things. Mm -hmm. um, that was a fantastic program for me. And I highly recommend it for anyone else who's looking to, to learn more. Um, I'm now a mentor in that group. That's how much I love it. Wow. So it, um, it was really great and taught me all the fundamentals and it's basically like the same principles of, that I use when I'm with my clients. I use Inspired Organizer to keep me from going down another giant rabbit hole. It's like, just show me what to do. Show me what works and kind of use those principles for the, the foundation for my first year in business. So what did you, uh, so, you know, what did you just start off on Facebook or something? Or how did you get, you know, did you like go organize some people's businesses for free or how did you get out there? Because I, you know, I have ideas for a couple of things that I want to do and I would just always want to know how to get these first clients. So kind of tell us, you know, somebody who wants to start something like this, you know, how did you like, get somebody to like financially give you something for doing this? Yeah, well, um, it it's not exactly the same thing, but my background was as an executive assistant. So hmm. I had, and like before that, you know, admin work. So I had a ton of experience keeping organizations, workspaces, um, my executives organized. And so it's basically taking those same principles and using them in, in different spaces. I'd also had practice like organizing my whole home. <laughs> and then, you know, you start really with working with friends and family and just say, you know, you're kind of practicing with people that, that you know, and love and know that you could like mess up or be a little flustered around and it's okay because you're going to be given a little bit of grace, you know, you're practicing there. And, um, and then from there, you just got to take that leap and start advertising. Um, social media is a great way to do it. Facebook page, Instagram account, just start putting yourself out there with confidence and just go for it. Did you, did you find, um, most of your clients being businesses? Cause I never thought of that. Like, you know, when I, when I was, preparing for this episode, I was thinking, oh, you know, you probably declutter homes or whatever. Um, but I never thought that right now you mentioned that you did businesses like, so were more, more of your clients businesses or were they homes? Well, what do you think? Was it even 50, 50 or. It was mostly, uh, homes and I was doing some small businesses, especially, um, at this time, it's not, it's not offered in the same way now, but at the time I was offering, a service where basically I would come in, let's say you're a business and you have employees and you need to know what to do, but you have employees. You don't necessarily need someone to implement every single step of the way. What I would do is come in and we'd talk about three to four different spaces um, that need more organization. I would look at everything, evaluate it, maybe talk to people who work there. Okay, how do you use this space? How often do you use this? Ask all the questions, photos, measurements, then I'd figure out the solutions and write a really detailed plan that you could then hand over to your employees and mm. have them make it happen. So the plan includes everything that you need to buy with like links, not just, oh, you know, you should look for this type of right, thing. right, right. No, very buy organized. This <laughs> yeah. five of them. <laughs> and you want this color, and you're gonna get this label, you're gonna put it here and map out everything. So yeah, so they could just hand it off to an office manager or they could purchase everything, give it to their employees and say, make it happen. So that's, that's a, that's really neat, you know, cause uh, you're setting up this system for them to be successful, right? Like you said, you're not just giving them like, 
hey, you know, I'm gonna put this in touch because it's different if you just went up there and you organize it for them, like you know what the system is and you know why you want to do it. But I think it's important to also teach, you know, the people who work there how to keep that organized, right? And how to continue like to be more efficient, right? Because you know, I've worked at businesses or whatever, I've had my own business where my organizational skills definitely hurt me because it's like oh, it's okay. I'll figure out what I sold, you know? And it's like, it, it, that like translates to like a digital thing too, right? Where you're like figuring out inventory, right? You're figuring out like um, how much things to reorder, how many things you do need, how many things you're not selling, you know? And I, and I feel like that's obviously a business nightmare, you know, like, because yeah, it looks cool. Just you're making, you think it's just like making sales or, or having people come to the door, but there's a lot, so much, there's so much more, I'm sorry, um, behind the doors, you know, where you're like, Hey, you know, uh, when people come in, you know, for instance, I'm thinking like a restaurant, maybe, you know, as far as like how they just set up everything and how they like actually put things away or even like a, a retail store where you're organizing, you know, how many pairs of socks you have, you know, so, you know, or where you put in the extra stuff, you know, because I think that's, you know, that becomes a problem, you know, I think this organization, you know, just thinking about this and reflecting is like, wow, I'm very unorganized, you know, so I gotta, <laughs> I gotta pick it up. And I, I think my wife or uh, keeping a system in place. And then, you know, we kind of just follow along me and my son, you know, my son and I just follow along like, okay, this is where things go. Because mm -hmm. if not, I'd be, you know, you know, the cups don't go here, you know, so I don't know, it just becomes a it becomes a process. Um, I don't know, you've seen that. It kind of reminds me, I mean, you saw those ladies, right? I forgot what their names are, but they're on Netflix too now, right? They have like a show and they, they like declutter like celebrities homes and stuff. You know what I'm talking the about? The home edit? Yeah. Yeah, the home edit. Yeah. So is that something you watch? Are you like into that? Are you have, do you see resources online from other people doing these things too? Yeah, there's a lot of great shows online um, that have been bringing a lot of attention to the industry, which mm -hmm. I think is amazing. Um, even when I first started, a lot of people, you'd have to explain like really what it is that you do just in general. Um, and after Marie Kondo's show came out, more people were like, oh, you're a professional organizer. Oh, okay, well, X, Y, Z, and then just kind of launch into it. You, you got to like skip the explaining part. Um, and I even had some clients, like one of their, someone's child was like really excited, but she thought that Marie Kondo was coming over. She was like, wait, wait, the woman from Netflix, like she's coming to our house. We're like, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be her exactly, but no, but it's um, a Sacramento, Sacramento version. So, yeah. cool. <laughs> and then other, other, you know, kids I've had them get excited because they were going to have a professional organizer at their house. And they thought that was so cool. So to have like an eight year old get really excited about that like i don't know that made me really happy no um, i mean that means that means they know they know the industry right they obviously like you see it's, it's becoming pop culture like it's in it's on netflix i saw it before it was on youtube right and like they're you know they would do like celebrities homes and then like i see i see all over the place people are trying to like on tiktok as well or other places online give you little tips here and there so i mean obviously yeah. you're doing really well with the digital thing and i know you you were talking about the transition you had to make can you kind of talk about the transition you made now from obviously pre-COVID times to where we're at today, as far as in your yeah. business. Yeah. And everybody's, everyone's a little different. So I will say that, you know, if you're looking for an organizer to work with you in your home, and even if you're, you know, you're local and you need suggestions, I can absolutely refer you to people that are doing that. Um, I was, you no, know, I was telling you before we hit record that. So before COVID, I always worked in home or in business with my clients. It was one-on-one. -on -one. It was me with them every step of the way. Um, and then since COVID, um, I've pivoted to the online space. And I know a lot of people are tired, tired of hearing the word pivot, but that's what happened. Um, and I decided that I'm not going to go back to working in home uh, only because in my family, you know, we have some people in my extended family that are more amino compromised. So it didn't make sense for me to it was basically like, do I ever want to see my family or do I want to see my clients type of thing? Um, so just making those decisions, even though mostly we're at home, you know, I, I would feel better for doing like outside visits with a family member that, um, that I haven't been in a bunch of people's homes. And yeah, anyway, so I just decided to not do it. I meet with clients virtually now one-on-one. -on -one, um, and I've also started an online course community. So I've just decided to take my time and energy and really focus it more into the digital space. Um, and the great thing about the industry is that there are so many people in it and there, a lot of people are doing 
slightly different thing. So you can always find plenty of people who have what you need. Um, even here in Sacramento, like I mentioned, I know organizers working at home. I also know if somebody wanted like a Marie Kondo, KonMari certified organizer here in Sacramento, I can refer you to someone too. So mm. there's, there's always, there's going to be someone who has exactly what you need. So and we can talk about a couple of things from this. So like, uh, you say there's a lot of people doing this right here around. So do you find there's competition or do you feel like you are mostly people are helpful with each other, referring to each other? I mean, do you see that like, is there a competition thing? Like, well, you don't get me or get that person. Or is it more like a community, like you said, that you're building of different organizers? I will say that this industry, I've personally felt that there's a lot of community over competition um, and that people are really looking to build each other up and help each other grow. Um, you know, if someone reached out to me and was somebody who was just getting started, I would definitely point them in the direction of like, okay, this is a great resource. You're going to want to check this out, make sure that you follow, you know, X, Y, Z, um, because there's plenty of room for everyone. And the thing is, this isn't an industry that's really limited by like, oh, only women need us or only mm. men or only businesses. Like there are so many people that can use assistance in this way in such a variety of realms in their life that there's plenty of work for everyone there's room for all right do you find like when you go and like um and you meet with a client is this a one-time thing or is this like a recurring you know situation where you have to continuously you know i know you set up a system i know you like kind of consult and you kind of figure out what they need but do you like, you know what I mean? Like, do you have to do check-ins with them or is it just a one-time, okay, there you go, you're organized. I mean, how does that work? So I used to offer one -off, like one-off sessions when I was in home with clients. And even one session would be three hours. At the time, what I would do is like, okay, we'd kind of declutter and I'd bring over items that I like use often in whatever space we were working in. And then if we could use them, great. And I would just invoice them for those items. And if not, no worries. If we need something else, I'd suggest it. And then they could take care of it and get it on their own. What I've found overall is that most people do better if they have some sort of accountability. And mm -hmm. my job, it, my role is better served if I'm working with people um, who want to set goals along the way and I'm touching base with them. We have those touch points so that we're working together to achieve their goals more long-term and not really like a one and done for most people. It's not going to be a one and done unless it's like my entire house is organized except for this one closet, which right. is almost no one. Every, most people I talk to can think of at least six places in their home that they could, would love to get some help on eventually, you know what yeah. I mean? And so we kind of prioritize what those top things are and then like what what do you really need to have organized right now what would be a nice to have after that and yeah. and just work kind of in that order like what's driving you the most crazy every day that should be number one and then you just go down the list from there how do you how, like you know i know that you're, you're doing it digitally like how do you see what they need like are they sending you pictures or you have like a certain way of, for you to see what they need like uh, you know how do you how do you like identify what that, what needs to be done and how do we attack that? You know, because when you go into a home, obviously I can, I'm just like imagining when you go into a home, you can obviously assess it. You have your checkpoints. Probably you probably have a list that you've set up by now. You're probably like making notes and then you probably, you know, you already, like you said, you, you know what you need to do, but digitally, how do you help somebody when you're not in their house or you're not in their business? That's a great question. I think that I'm not going to lie. It has been super helpful that I went digitally after being in so many homes. I think uh. it would have been a lot harder if I hadn't if I didn't have that experience of just being in like many, 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 many different homes right. and then moving to virtual. Um, so I will definitely admit that, but basically what I've shifted my focus to for my whole business is really focusing on the um, decluttering as the foundation of everything organization related. And there's a lot of like really beautiful things like on Pinterest and Instagram where things like just look really pretty. And I think that's, um, it's a, like a lot of fun trends are out there around that. It's mm -hmm. not that I don't love pretty spaces, but what I really want to do is help 
clients focus on, let's remove the things that you don't use, want, need, or love. And then let's create really simple solutions around that and go from there. So when I'm meeting with clients, the first things that we're going to do are really focus on the decluttering aspect of whatever space, because a lot of times, you know, when you come in, people say, okay, like, what should I do with this closet? But the closet is filled, you know, top to bottom with just stuff, 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 stuff. But you can't see what you need to store. You can't, you don't know what you're going to keep. There's no point in actually trying to like think of a solution at that point. It's not until you pull out everything, go through it, figure out what you have. And you're like, okay, this needs to be a priority. This needs to be a priority. We don't even have to worry about that because we let go of 20 pounds of X, Y, Z. It's no longer in the picture. Okay, let's figure this out and go from there. So we focus on decluttering and then it's a lot of like, all right, show me what I'm working with. You know, maybe that's taking a picture of in that closet example, like seven different piles. You've got me, you've got the coats, you've got the shoes, you've got the sports equipment, and then you're showing me the closet and you're sending me dimensions and you're, are there any supplies you already have that you can use and you want to use? Cool. Are there any supplies you have, but you actually can't stand them and you want to donate them and we want to buy new supplies. That's fine too. And then I do the part of figuring out what fits, what doesn't fit, what should go where and saying like, okay, here's the plan. Here's what you need. Put this here, this here, this here. And like doing that shuffle. That's that's like, that's really cool. I'm just thinking about it. As you're talking about it, I'm just thinking about growing up in my house and watching my mom trying to organize the garage has been a process that she's still working on. Like, to this, I mean, we've, we moved several, several times, but it's like always been a process. Like I want to have the garage clean. I'm like, and she'll grab stuff and then she'll take it to the other side of the garage. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just funny because I'm thinking, as you're talking, I'm thinking about like watching my dad, like, don't throw that away. You know, I want that. And mom's like, we don't need this anymore. And he's like, so it's just like this constant of like, no. And I think I've definitely picked up that trait where I have like, I mean, I have all my trophies since I was a kid, you know, and it's like, for what, you know, I don't know, like for me, it's just like, I have all these trophies, but then I see my brother and he throws everything away. You know, he throw away, he threw away every single trophy we had, you know, yearbooks, I have them piled up. My, my brother throws them away. You know, like, it's just funny. Like we're totally opposites when it comes to that. So, but I see my parents' traits in me where I'm like, my garage, I have like boxes, uh, you know, in the rafters of like jerseys that I used to wear, you know, when I was playing, um, you know, all these different things. And I'm just like, I don't know. Do you, do you find that as a, as a issue when people just don't want to get rid of things? Is that an issue that obviously comes up? It has to come up a lot, right? Like not getting rid of like emotional things. They just hang on to. Not so much with, well, a couple of things, not so much with my clients because people come to me when they're ready to start letting go. Okay. And I'm, I meet with people before we actually start working together. So we're talking about a game plan and we're talking about having decluttering be the focus. Usually people are ready to make that change. It's okay. happened a couple times. Like sometimes people think that they're ready and they want to be ready, but they're not ready. <laughs> or sometimes people it's a lot easier with some things, but then sentimental is hard. And then that gets into like, okay, what are you ready for right now? And if that means that we're starting on the easy stuff, like things like in your kitchen. Right. So yeah, so places like the kitchen, they don't have a lot of sentimental items aren't going to be sentimental either for some people clothing is really sentimental and it triggers so it just depends on you kind of got to feel that out but I recommend to people like let's start with the things that are easier you're flexing that decluttering muscle getting used to making rapid fire decisions and then working into the sentimental but even when you get there there may be some stuff that you I mean and this is specifically sentimental that you're thinking to yourself, okay, I know I need to go through this, but I'm not ready today. That's okay. That's fine. And it's, it's part of the process. And I would be a full blown liar if I said that, you know, oh yeah, I decluttered my house. I never had to declutter anything ever again. No, that's not true. It's a process. Even now, like I rotate my clothing with every season. So I'm clearing out my closet like four times a year. And I'm making edits, you know, there's things where you're just like, yeah, I'd never wear this. I'm over it. Let's let go. Um, and sentimental items have been a process too. Like 
I used to have, oh my gosh, I was telling my husband about this the other day. I have so, I had so many um, journals Mm. and like my diaries from when I was a teenager (laughs) and then a bunch of like notebooks filled with poetry. And it was just the most embarrassing crap you've ever read in your life. Like it was just, it was yeah, but yeah, but it's yours though. You know, it's, it's it's your you know your childhood. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> ten years ago, I was just like, this is this is mine. This is so important. I want to hold on to it. And over the years, I was like, like you were saying, like for what though? So that when I die, someone's gonna read this and see the embarrassing things that I wrote. Like, no, no, right. it's not gonna happen. And I just like let it. I shredded it. Yeah, I think you have to like choose what you want to let go because I think. For a long time, I mean, I had this huge box of trophies, right? Because, you know, you get a trophy every season. I played all these different sports. So my mom would bug me for, like, years. And I just finally told her, like, okay, you know what? I'm going to pick, like, one trophy. You know what I mean? I'll hang on to one trophy that, like, whatever. And I just got, you know, I got rid of all of them. And, you know, it was just for me, like, to have my son finally. He saw them. And he saw the trophies. And he's like, I want to get trophies when I play. And I, that was enough for me. Like, that's why I hang. That's why I hung on to these, you know, when I was four years old, you know, these, like, 18-year-old trophies. That's why I hung on to just so my son could see them and that's it, you know, and that's okay. Now I can let go, you know, but it's like, maybe he would never believe me that his dad had like over a hundred trophies, but that's it, you know, but I think that like you say, you have to choose what you want to start getting rid of. I think with clothes, I'm not so bad with, you know, like I, I don't really like value clothes like that. You know, I, I just, you know, I'm wearing t-shirts and my wife makes fun of me because I only want to wear is like Nike sweats all day. And like, so I, I don't really care too much. It's like, you know, I just need to have a couple pairs of jeans and we'll call it a day and some shoes, but um, do you find like the closet is like the most popular place they call, they call you to come and check out? Or like you said, is it like a process? Because like, I know, like, I don't know, for me, our kitchen is is pretty well organized. I mean, I know you, you posted some really cool things that we could do, but um, I don't know. What do you find is like the hot spot first? Where do you start off or what are they, what are they really focused on your clients that they need help with? I would, I would say there's a number of places, but probably the most popular are, Um, not even kitchen so much, but pantries, people love to get their pantries organized. Mm -hmm. Um, I love to organize pantries. They're a lot (laughs) of fun because none of usually stuff in a pantry isn't emotional at all. It's very cut and dry. Like, is it expired? No, probably keep it. If no one's eating, eating it, maybe food bank, but usually it's just a lot easier to go through, um, and make those changes. And then you can just like implement fun things that make things easier, Um, yeah, bedroom closets are really popular offices and like filing systems, Mm. um, places like utility closets where like, if you have one main closet in a house, how do you set it up to be the most useful? And for a lot of people, they're just like, I don't know where this goes. And then, yeah, it's like, here's the mop. Here's the jackets that we don't wear. (laughs) It's just like a bunch of stuff. Yeah. everything so kind of giving things homes clearing it out um also popular is going through spaces that end up being the catch-all so Mm. maybe it's the kitchen table or the top of some sort of cupboard but an area that just ends up accumulating a lot of things and like there's constantly a pile figuring Mm. out what's in the pile decluttering and then like okay let's let's figure out systems so that this isn't a thing that constantly happens over and over um and garages or storage spaces the garage is the worst right like i'm right now i'm on this huge like idea that i'm gonna redo the i am i'm redoing the garage i'm gonna like you know organize it i have these beautiful like you said pinterest is like really cool to look at or youtube and i just feel like you know you go through there you're like oh because you, you pick up little things that like we have this issue where like you know you pick up things that you think are going to be needed right like you know you you might get a life jacket for your son and you pick up three of them because you found them on on sale or whatever so now you have three life jackets like with one kid it's like what? so then you start like you start piling things up because you, you just oh next summer i'm gonna have this or you know i'll put this here and that's just the issue with the garage and, and you know it's like now i want to make the garage more of a living space you know that i could actually use you know take the cars out and hang out in there work out in there whatever it may be so yeah the garage has definitely been a i think is more popular now right to like have your garage really organized i think that's people are Maybe because we were home so much with this COVID, you start looking at your house so much. You're like, oh my gosh, right? Like I have all these boxes of things I've never opened, you know? So, mm-hmm. I mean, making that transition that you did, um, going digital, I know you say you're like, you're thinking you're going to go digital now. Um, I mean, how important, like how, how organized are you digitally? You know, like how do you have your, I mean, do you have your files? Are you following the same kind of systems? Because I found like 
you know, my Google, my Google Drive is a mess, you know, so how, I just want to know, does that translate over to the computer as well? Um, I will say, yeah, I'm pretty organized with my digital files. <laughs> and I've, I've also done it for clients, even during COVID, um, I've helped people organize their files because there's a lot of, you can get remote access to other people's files pretty yeah. easily. So yeah. Google Drive is a great example. I had a client that was on they had a lot of things like in their hard drive and then they were using a different email system and then they had Google drive. So they had a ton of files sometimes in multiple places, but like duplicates everywhere. So they were yeah. like, this is getting crazy. So they threw everything into Google drive and I went through and organized it all, wow. set them up with a key so that they knew like, okay, I'm looking for this. This is where I find it. Um, but then also had to delete all the duplicates and it was, it was like a whole thing, but, um, but it was really fun. And yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good about my digital file organization. And the reason is because I like what I basically live for now is like being able to find things when I need it. When someone's like, you know, Hey, well, what about this? I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll get it. They're like, I mean, no rush. I'm like, no, it'll literally take me two seconds like that's the best feeling to know that it's not going to be yeah you're not going to have to be searching for you know you don't have to set aside an hour this weekend you could just get it you know exactly where it is like that makes me so happy and I really can't stand having um like even paper clutter around my house so yeah my files my files <laughs> digital and <laughs> physical they're pretty good so that's something you yeah that's something you do wow that's cool because the digital I know I posted a picture of like my desktop. I was just taking a picture of my little office space and I put it on Instagram and all my, and a bunch of friends commented like, bro, you, your desktop is giving me anxiety. You know, cause I had like <laughs> a thousand screenshots, you know, cause I'm always taking screenshots. I'm a teacher. Right. So yeah, I, right now we're digital. Right. And kind of talking about that transition, you said like you were in person, you were doing your thing, you know, you're making these home visits or these uh, office visits. And now, you know, we obviously were stuck at home teaching from home and I'm starting to see that like, you know, you need to have all your stuff digitally prepared. Like you said, I can't find, I'm like downloading this file a million times for my Google drive because I can't find it on my document folder, whatever, you know? So it's like a, I'm, if you looked at my Google drive, you would understand why maybe like my classroom would be the same, you know, where it's like, okay, I think your file's over here. Let me just go look for it. So mm -hmm. it's definitely something that could translate from in-person to a digital, you know, space, um, you know, and just, you know, talking about that transition, uh, I was talking to my friend the other day about teaching and how I think schools are definitely going to make that change forever, you know, where there's going to be schools that are going to be completely online, obviously, because of this Zoom thing and how popular this is and how it's it's working for some students. Um, and I know you say, like, you're not going to make that, you don't want to make that change back because I think you're doing it digitally, you could reach more people, you know, you could obviously, it's hard for you to drive to let's say, you know, Fresno, or then, you know, have to drive to Reno, but, you know, online, you could do Fresno, Reno, and San Francisco on the same day, you know, I don't know how, what you think about that, but obviously, I think you could reach more people in one day, right, so it's definitely going to be more um, time efficient, right, on your end. Especially with the course, too, like, being able to grow the number of students in a course, and then, you know, we have Q&A calls twice a month, so we all hop on. If you have a question, you can bring whatever your specific question is in your space. You can bring it to me. You're still getting my eyes on your space, um, but then everybody's learning from each other as well. So having those people be, you know, they can be in other states, which they are, they could be in other countries, yeah. which is a goal. And we can all just come together. And then people also have a forum to post comments and questions. And cool. yeah, it's, it's, it's just a way to be able to reach more people and, and I just, there was a point where I was like, okay, I'm, it's going to take a lot of time and energy to make this happen. So if that's going to be the, like, if that's where I'm going, then that needs to be my focus. Because yeah. if I try and do both at once, then I'm going to still be, you know, doing what I used to do and driving here and driving here and driving here and all that driving time, I could be focusing on growing this community. So yeah. just decided to make that choice and it's not the right choice for everyone a hundred percent, but, um, but I'm really excited about it. And now I know what 2021 is going to be all about for me. And no, it's cool. I mean, it's like totally eye-opening, right? Like how, how many businesses made that, like you said, that pivot, you know, keyword, they made that change. So like, 
you know, you go to a restaurant, obviously you, you, I mean, when the restaurants were open or when they are opening up, you know, you scan your QR code, right? So like things are changing forever. I don't think they're going to go, people are going to go back to paper menus like that. I don't think they're going to, you know, a lot of people are going to stop accepting cash anyways. You know, they, they wanted to get away from that because they like to just have their accounting so easy, but, 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 you know, it's in and out to the POS system. So it's just like, I don't know, you're seeing a lot of these people just make this change. You know, I know a soccer player who was, you know, he's a professional soccer player and he was stuck at home as well. So he started doing training on Zoom, you know, he was just doing it for kids. And now he's got a huge partnership, huge sponsorship because he had so many kids doing his videos, you know, like how to do these different tricks and stuff. And I was just like, that wasn't available, you know, for you to be able to train kids across the country or you said across the world. You couldn't do that before you could, but nobody was into that. But now that yeah. everyone's forced to like look at their phone or their iPad or whatever it may be, you know, you got in-home trainers, you know, people that are doing this training, you know, physical fitness training from home. Um, mm -hmm. They can reach more clients. Like you said, you can create this community that you that you've created. So can you kind of talk about your class and how I know you offer a free class. So how does that translate into like making that into a client? How do you how do you continue that on? Like what's the process? that you took first of all to create the class and then how do you get that person to you know stay on yeah so um so i will there's basically like two main ways to work with me one is like as a client one-on-one -on -one, or getting into the online course community and the free class basically feeds into the the online course so i know it's a pretty common like marketing technique to like have a free class or webinar that people can mm -hmm. take a bunch of tips from mm -hmm. and then you know you take that opportunity to also tell them if you want to work with you in more depth and like really like go to the next level like here's how you can do it and give people that information um but the free class goes into like the top three biggest mistakes that I pe see people making when they start to declutter and organize and basically what to do instead. Um, and it just kind of leads people through a ton of top tips so that you can make sure that if you want to declutter and organize, if you are frustrated by how much stuff in your house, and you're also worried that, okay, if I take this on, it's going to suck up all my free time. Like if that's your big concern, then this free class helps you see how you can make it happen without taking up all your free time right. that's all and that, yeah. like save your energy from a bunch of mistakes that I made. Like don't make these mistakes, do this instead. Right. Um, and then it also shows, shares with people how to work with me deeper. That's cool. So when you came up with this, like, it's a cool, cool technique, right? Like a free class, kind of like a, it's kind of like a little, I don't know, reflection, right? Where these, where these people can kind of see what they need to do. And like, like, I think like you said that you hit it, the, the time consumption, like to me, like when you tell me organize something, I'm like, oh my, it's going to take too much time, right? So to me, it's like, it's easier just to leave it like that. Like, I'm good. I'll find, you know, the weed whacker when I need it or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't need to like hang it up on the, you know, it's fine. But like, but then you also save time if you do it one time, right? You save time for the future, right? Because not only are you not looking for it, but you also know what you have, you know what you need, right? Because like, you know, I'm collecting things like left and right. I have chargers for like phones that I don't have anymore. You know, like mm -hmm. it's like everyone has that drawer of like chargers and things that you might need. It's like, dude, you don't need that. You know, you only have one phone, you only need one charger. But I mean, yeah. it's kind of cool that you kind of said the time, you know, giving people time back, you know, because yeah, you put the work in, but it's definitely going to pay off, you know, if you do it right and you continue to like feed that, you know, declutter system, then you don't have to, you know, worry about finding things or, like you said, repurchasing things that you think you might need. You know, I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've had to buy things because I thought I didn't have it and I found it new somewhere else. Like, oh my God, like I had it in the box, oh, you yeah. know? Oh yeah, I gave this example recently, but I um, had a client where they found a part to a car seat. You know, car seats are so expensive. Like if you go from one kid to two, like, and you have the car seat from before and it's not, you know, it's still good. Like that's, that's basically gold and yes. yeah, for parents. So um, they found a part and basically, I think it was like a couple weeks before that or a month before that, they were looking for the part couldn't find it, got rid of the whole car seat, had to buy a whole new one. And then they the find part. this part like a month later, they're like, they were so angry and right. it's stuff like that, but it can be anything. It could be you being at the grocery store and being like, wait, do we have this thing that we need to make this? I'll just get it. Oh, I already have four of them. Or, you know, like you buy something to travel and then you discover you already have eight travel pillows hiding all over your house. Cause they're not all in the same location. Like Plus, 
with the cord example you're talking about, say you do have a container of cords, the things that you do only need occasionally, which is great. When you do go to get into the cord, you're not constantly sifting through the 18 other cords that are for the items that are long gone. Like you just, you can open it up and be like, boom, that's what I need. Close it up. And it's, if it's easy to get to and it's easy to put away and you're going to be more likely to keep up that system. Yeah, I'll be mean, definitely thinking about the like, Oh, I have an issue. I always, I always lose my AirPods. So we finally put this little like bin, this little tiny plastic bin by the front door because we, I, we go running. And so like, there's just a rule to leave the AirPod. Ca- everything there has to, like, you know, I get back from the house, I leave it there. And then when I'm leaving, I leave it there because if yeah. not, like I'll leave the AirPods somewhere, like in my pocket and it'll fall out of my pocket. Cause I'm, you know, it'll go into the couch and like, man, I've lost my AirPods many times. And it takes like, it, it like bothers me to not find them, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> so my wife's like, here's this box. Like here are the, you know, the keys and the AirPods. That's all they go there. You know what I mean? So just drop your AirPods here when you come in, when you're leaving, when you're not using them, put them back there. And that's, so I think that's kind of like the only system we've kind of come up with recently that I need because if I, I, I can't live without my AirPods. I just, I just can't right now. It's impossible. That's fair. And you also know. I completely hear you because I have a little running bag in my, my front closet and it's everything that I need for running. It's got like my armband and yeah. my hat and my um what is it called the gator the gator yeah yeah which is so great you know you pull it up yeah i have one um yeah okay this is circling back a little bit but i would be kicking myself if i didn't share this with you go ahead going back to the desktop thing i just wanted to tell you a little hack to help you okay keep your desktop clear and like make it easily manageable okay so when you take screenshots instead of having them saved to your desktop have them saved to your downloads folder Mm. And then when you go like me, my downloads folder has everything. That's just like, I use it like a temp folder. It's a mess. Yeah. I just go through sometimes anything that's like over 60 days old. I know I don't need anymore. So I just mm. occasionally delete. If you're over older than 60 days, boom, you delete. Then it just keeps it like nice and clear. And then my desktop is saved for the things that I actually only use all the time, which is maybe 5% of what's going through my computer. Right. But um, I use the downloads folder like all the time. That's cool. Yeah. That's a good idea because yeah, it goes straight to your desktop. It's like, oh, and it's a mess. And you know, most screenshots you want to use them right away. Like it's like something I'm doing for my students where I'll screenshot it and drop it in a, a slide or I yeah. drop it in a Google classroom. And so it's like, nah, I'm never going to use it again. Like I'm never going to find it anyways because they're all labeled screenshots. So yes, you're never yes, going to yes. find them. So yeah. it means just a quick little poop, 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 you know? And right now with the podcast, what I've um starting to learn is like obviously i do i make a lot of clips um so what i do is i'm starting to label them you know like season like s2 for season two yeah. you know underscore episode one e1 you know and so then i have it that way and it's like okay and then i'm dropping it and I, I had to buy a hard drive because my my computer was running out of space obviously i make videos every day so i'm dropping them there so i'm trying to like i'm i'm more like concerned about my digital organization than my physical out here because I don't know. I'm not really worried about it too much, but I do like to have my computer kind of organized, you know, as far as like, you know, where my files are. So that's definitely a process I'm going to work on. I have a buddy that's giving me a hard time about that for a long time. He's like, let me just do it one day. I'm like, but then you're kind of like, don't touch my stuff, bro. Like there's nothing in here, but like, don't touch it. Let me just do it. It's kind of this weird thing where I like, don't touch my sock drawer. You know, I know they're just socks, but it's like still like this mine, you know? So I don't know. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's hard for me to like let people do it, but I'm definitely going to work on that I, I i'm i appreciate that hack because i never thought about that obviously changing the destination of that because my, my desktop is disgusting um but you know and then uh, you know because also even with tabs you know you see the tabs on the top like i don't know it just gives me anxiety like my administrator we do staff meetings right and we're all watching and he has like four thousand i mean he has to you know he's obviously emails and, and everything he has to do there's like four like the tabs i don't even know there was like that many you could do it was like these little tiny little lines and i'm like you know and so little things like that kind of like in the whole meeting yeah they're kind of like well you know everyone in the meeting's like dude what you know and it's like it's a lot so i definitely see that the need for the digital that's something obviously you can capitalize on and people who are doing this you know that digital thing is going to continue to help you know because people could help you know you said filing was the old way right we're like hey i need you to help me out with these filing cabinets right we're doing that and people still might do that for certain things but honestly like you said it's usually like you know pdfs now right so people are just organizing their pdfs where they need them and um trying to go paperless you know trying to get rid of things that come home like bills when I, when I get a bill it bothers me like dude why am I getting a paper bill like I don't need this and we already paid it you know so little things like that that just like I don't know maybe yeah. declutter that kind of lifestyle for sure 
Oh yeah, I should send you, um, I'm gonna make a little note to send you this article that's from HuffPost about how to get less um, junk mail. That's really helpful. Yeah, it's such a mess. You know, I just feel so, I used to work in um, postal kind of, and mm -hmm. you know, I just like, I, I do, I would see, I would put people's mail away, right? I used to work at a, at a mail center. And so I put people's mail, I'm like, dude, you're not, like, it's like unnecessary keep, like things they're like, dude, you know, like, you know, and I know it's not them, they're not ordering. These companies just pushing out a bunch of paper and things like no one's going to open that, man. It's such a mess. You know, like, I don't even like junk emails. Like if I get email from like a company that I signed up for, I'm pissed. You know, I, 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 I automatically unsubscribe. Like I don't even like my email to like come up like that. You know, that's why I like the Gmail app because it just organizes it by promotion. Right. And like social and then your real stuff. I like that because I don't want to see the other stuff. I don't need, have no need in that. I only want to see an email from a, a person that wants to talk to me. It's fantastic. And I love, I just got a new phone. Like finally, I'm not even going to tell you how old my old phone was. Cause it's really sad. But, um, now that I have this new phone, I'm like, Oh, I can, I can just like swipe. I could set it up so that I could just yeah. swipe to delete my email instead of having to like click. And click delete and then it. First delete, and yeah. I, that's been basically like my new favorite thing. I'm just like, goodbye. Yeah, no, I definitely got rid of, uh, I get rid of the Apple mail app. I only use the Gmail app. Me too. Because the Gmail app, yeah, because the Gmail app will, like I said, it organizes by like just real stuff and other stuff. I don't even want to see it. Mm -hmm. Because we have the real, if you have the open, like just the generic Apple Mail app, like you're going to get everything. It's like, it's too much. No. So I just like to have my Gmail thing kind of yeah. rolling for me, you know? So visually, it's just too much. Yeah. I'm a kind of guy that, like, if I see a notification on an app, I have to clear it. Like, I can't see little red notification. I don't know that those kind of things bother me. I wish I you would use that kind of energy at my house maybe or in my garage or in my car or like in my whatever you know so it's definitely something that i need to start taking to the physical world but um speaking of cars like i don't know i get this great feeling i don't know if you know obviously you do because you like everything organized but when i clean out a car like the other day i decided just to clean out both cars like i was just even my wife asked me like what are you doing like why are you doing this i'm like because i don't know i just saw the cars and i just decided to wash them vacuum them do everything and i'm just throwing out like you know because you might have a bottle here or like one random receipt that fell, you know, it's just little things that you don't mean to be messy, but it just happens because like you're running late from a gas station, whatever you drop, you know, whatever. And so I don't know. I love that feeling when everything's out of my car. And the only thing in there is like the garage opener. Like that's it. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause we don't need anything in there. Like you always have that glove compartment, like for what there's not, you don't ever grab anything from there, you know? So I don't know. Uh, thinking of you like coming to like do that for somebody at their house, I probably would be the same feeling like we like, Oh, thank you for organizing this pantry or, or whatever, maybe. Cause that's what I feel when I, when I have the car just like super clean. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so this is a funny side story. It's quick. But no, when fine. I first started dating my husband and about a year into our relationship, we were in college and we lived in San Francisco. So I didn't need a car at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about getting one, but he was like, dude, you don't have any money. Like, should you really buy a car? I'm like, I guess you're right. See how I was terrible with money. So he was like, why don't you just get on my insurance? We'll split it. It'll save us both money. And then if you need it for the weekend, then you could just like drive to your parents' house or whatever. Cool. Awesome. So we did that for years and years and years before we got married. So the thing about him though, is that he loves having a clean car. He, every time he leaves, he's always taking, if there's a scrap of paper, if there's a tissue, if there's an extra wow. thing, every single time he takes it out of the car, that's just how he always kept it. And it was his car. So it was basically like, them's the rules. You got to do it. And so I just got used to it. So then now that we live in SAC, we have two cars and one of mine was for my business, but I always kept it again, like spick and span because clients see it. So when they're coming out and I'm taking their donations at the end of the day, like I always had my car. I mean, it wasn't perfect all the time, but I frequently like vacuumed out the trunk. So that right, right. very clean. Yeah. They're like, whoa, why is like your clean, your car is so clean. I'm like, yeah. well, it has to be because you're going to see it right yeah. now. You got to play the part. Yeah. You got, yeah. You can't For show up there moment. with it. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> and it, you know, it's not like the newest, nicest car in the world, no. but it was clean as hell. So <laughs> it's, yeah. I completely understand because it's like, you just take so much pride in just having this like very, yeah. clean environment and then when you're driving you're not distracted by all this other stuff it's like it makes yeah. driving so much more peaceful no. um it's very inviting to go into a clean car you know because like even though 
my cars aren't new. I don't want to think that my, I have a Beamer. No, no, no. I have, you know, my car is my college car, right? So it's over 10 years old. But yeah. I wanted it, to, you know, it's still, like you said, it's that feeling that inside you're like, wow. Or even someone comes in, sits down. You know, it's like when you go into an Uber, right? They have to be clean. They have to be, you know, perfectly clean. And it's inviting to go into a clean car that smells nice, that doesn't, you know, you might have something, you know, when you have, and then, you know, I have a son. So the other day I found a sandal that like we were trying to look for because I only had the other one and like the left one was under the seat because it just, you know, he just kicked it and maybe he got out the car without it. And like, I didn't know where it was, you know, because you're never going to look like that. So it's definitely like, I don't know. I, I think the car definitely like uh, makes you feel good when it's clean. Like you said, you know, you want to organize that kind of stuff. So I definitely could see the need to do that at your house, to do that on your phone, have your things organized, to have your digital space, like your computer organized. I mean, it's something that's uh, a process. It's definitely something that um, people have to learn. And um, they just, you know, like you said, maybe like you didn't start out with it. You said you had a messy room, um, as a kid. So obviously it's not something that you, you know, you were like super neat the entire time, but you definitely no. were picking up, you know, you said you had to like kind of reflect and be like, oh my goodness. And, you know, it's crazy. You said the finances were definitely one of them, you know, like, I think we all get at that point when we're in our twenties, you know, like, you know, you start opening credit cards, whatever it may be to get by, whatever you have to do. And next thing you know, you got bills, you know, for companies, you didn't, you know, whatever. I remember one time I accidentally signed up for that. I don't know if you remember, but it was like that. It was like Disney was sending you the DVDs or something. It was like a long time ago, but I thought it'd be cool to get the Disney DVDs, you know, and I couldn't cancel. And I'm like, it just kept coming. And it's like, and you couldn't like, you know, it was a bunch of those. It wasn't a scam because it would give you the DVD, but you couldn't like yeah. get out of it, you know? And so uh -huh. it, it's one thing I kind of came up with was uh, an idea was, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure someone does this, but it was an idea. And I, and I, and I learned it by helping my parents because you know how, you know, you have Xfinity at home or you have a at t whatever, you have a company. They're never going to call you and let you know, hey, you're overpaying. You know, we've already changed the rates after, right? And so I thought of a business like, what if, you know, you do like a consultation, someone does a consultation where, you know, you check out people's bills and you definitely find them. I know there's apps for it, but like, for instance, with my mom, she was overpaying, she was paying over $200, right? Because they had this triple play you know, with the home phone and everything, no one ever picked up the home phone. No one even, yeah. like I knew the number because that was the number I had as a kid, but no one calls it, right? No, every time they call it, it'd be like 1-800 or whatever. It was just trash. So I called one day and ended up, they had like 200 megabytes for internet. It was garbage. So I called one day and I was like, hey, I need a gig, you know, we need to upgrade. And they ended up saving over a hundred dollars a month. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, because they were just paying this old rate from like 2004, you know, this is 2020, you know? So I'm like, if you don't call, they're never going to let you know, hey, you're paying way more for something that's not necessary and is really slow. It's not, you know? So I always, I just thought like, there just have to be some kind of service where you could go help people declutter their bills as well, you know, <laughs> something mm -hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I just thought about that. I was like, man, I can make money, you know, helping them out for sure. It's something too, like if you're not paying attention to what's going on in your finances, and I'm just going to use a couple examples from when I, did not look at my bills at all. Um, I was getting overdraft fees left and right because I didn't, I, I never knew how much was in my bank account. And anyway, it was just a mess. And then you're getting like overdraft fees on top of overdraft fees. Right. Or maybe you signed up for something that you never use and you completely forgot about it, but you're just still paying for it. If you're not regularly looking at your bills, you're never going to catch that. And they hope that you don't um yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about yeah you're not gonna you know you go to the bank and you sign up for something like you know you get to have this much money in there or whatever you don't know, pay attention to it but there's also there's always promotions there's always these deals or there's always like these hey you know let's change the way your account is whatever it may be and i think you know obviously my wife who has taken that over because when she met me i was a, a wreck with my money so she's like i'll do this right so she took it over and obviously we have what we have because she she knows how to do it because i'm not I don't like looking at how much money I don't have. So I don't like going and logging on and seeing that, you know, it's like, let's just keep it like that. But like you say, if you don't log in and you don't check it out, you know, you got overdraft fees or for instance, I had a Netflix. It was so simple though. I had a Netflix account. It's, it's free through my phone, but it was like signed up for four screens. Right. I'm like, we don't even have four people in my house. Like there's never going to be someone watching four shows at <laughs> once. So that little yeah. $2 was like, it was $2, you know, every month, or I think it was $3 every month. It's like, why am I doing that? You know? So little things like that, that people don't catch. I was like, dude, I only need two screens. You know, like we don't have, I don't watch Netflix anymore really like that. So it's not like we're going to have everyone watching my son and, you know, you know, we don't have four people. So it, it, little things like that, that people don't see or like their phone, like I was paying insurance on my phone 
but the phone was already paid off. So in reality, there was like, I'm paying $10 if my phone breaks, but it's like, you know, if you do insurance for $10 a month over two, three years, you're overpaying for this phone. Like you already paid for it. So there's just little things here and there that I think we don't catch. And these companies love that, you know, like, Hey, they're not going to catch that. Like they're just gonna keep paying $10, $12 a month. Mm-hmm. And it adds up. It definitely yeah. adds up. <laughs> so yeah. just like gift cards that you don't use, like they never had to give you anything, but you gave them the money. Don't wow. tell me that because I just found this, like, I found my old wallet that I don't use anymore. It had like eight gift cards from different companies. And I was trying to like see what was on them. And a lot of them made it really hard for me to look up what I had, you know? And it's like, I never use this gift card. And it was like, you know, restaurants or whatever, different places. And I'm trying to get on it. And the code that's on there, it's like different now. The system's not the same anymore. So I'm like, what? Like, so I was like, oh, don't tell me like, you know, I don't know if there's money on there or not, but I was like, I don't want to throw these gift cards away. If there's like eight bucks on there or whatever, maybe it could be something. So, you know. I was kind of speaking of money and it kind of came up when I was, when you were talking about it, when you do get these clients, do you find that they have to spend a lot of money as far as like to organize their home? Or do you think they, you know, a lot of these people have stuff already home that they can utilize as far as like, you know, I'm talking about little bands or the fancy, whatever may be. Do you think they have to spend a lot of money on top of not just the consultation? It really depends. And I work with people as much as possible. So for instance, I was working in somebody's garage and they had a lot of bins, like maybe in theory, we would only need to buy four, but they were like, no, I want it all to match. And I gave them a couple options like, okay, there's this upgraded version and it has a few more benefits. This is what it is, but they're, you know, like $18 a bin, or you could get these more simple ones. It doesn't have the same benefits, but it'll probably be okay. And this is going to be like $6 a bin. They're like, nope. I want the $18 bin one and I want them for all my bins. So switch them on out and just buy cases and cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. So they're spending hundreds of dollars on garage bins. Does it look beautiful? Yes, it looks amazing. Um, But is it necessary? No. Um, I've had other clients who are like, okay, so something that comes up a lot is that we want things to fit as good as possible. So sometimes I'm making recommendations to clients. I'm like, hey, this is not the most expensive item, or this is not the least expensive item. This is more expensive, but it fits this space perfectly. Like Mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to fit this space perfectly as perfect with this other item, or maybe it's like a clear bin and it fits perfect. And we could get a slightly less good fitting item that's not clear, but they were hoping for clear, but it's less expensive. So, you know, they'll, they can make those decisions. There are plenty of amazing items that you can find at Ikea, which since 2020, it's been a little bit harder to get Ikea, especially shipping. If anyone's tried, that's like a whole thing these days. Oh, but okay. if you want to brave Ikea. I, I'm scared of that place regardless. I don't even know where I'm at. Like, like, and then you have to just skip it. Just and then you have to build it. And it's like, it never. I don't know why, but I'm not trying to bad mouth. But I've always bought things that I can't build it right. It never come out like it's it's. Some things are wobbly, you know, it's like, let's talk about shelves and stuff like that, but. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I don't even like to put up shelves with my husband anymore. It's like, just a, it's like, tell me to build a shelf and put it up. All you're saying is like, here, argue with your husband about something silly. Like we just don't (laughs) do it anymore. But, (laughs) but yeah, like places like Ikea or Target, even like the dollar store have a lot of great inexpensive options. jars and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And things might not fit as well like if you're going by using your space exactly i'm not saying like oh expensive items always fit i'm just saying sometimes there's going to be an item that costs more that is probably going to do the job like better Mm -hmm. but it might not be the cheapest option um but there's a lot of amazing things that you can do for less shoot if you go on pinterest and you say like dollar store organization hack people have it yeah so much so many amazing options there's a ton that you can do for less the the item that i recommend most like when i'm talking to people about like a mail hack that i use the thing i'm like i'm like this is six dollars you know it doesn't have to be really expensive to be effective and it doesn't have to be expensive to be really good looking right i think there's something like people want to you know like you said want it to match or whatever they want to get maybe like kind of motivated by it because it's kind of like when you start working out you want to go buy yourself some new shoes and new sh- uh, clothes because it's like it, it makes you feel like all right i'm doing something different and maybe that's how they feel when they want to have all the bands matching or whatever because it is 
an aesthetic thing, right? You look at it, you're like, wow, you know what I mean? Because like, I could say my garage is organized, but it doesn't look that cool if all the bins are different colors or if, you know what I mean, my shelves are older and they're not the new slick white, you know, whatever it may be. So I, I could understand that a little bit. Uh, and then, I would, But the digital thing has helped you, right? Because like, although you can't be there physically and obviously, like you said, we could reach more people, but now with like, these different companies that do like free shipping or, or just shipping to home. Like, like you said, you don't just say, Hey, get some bins. Like you actually are researching and finding the bin of the right size. You probably have some vendors that you like to go to all the time. You're very preferred, you know, your preferred people you go see. And so you could, you know, literally drop ship it to their house, right? You don't even have to go there and you can say, Hey, these three bins are for the top shelf or whatever, maybe. So yep. it's kind of cool that you're over here coaching them from here. Like, Hey, it goes right there. And this one goes right there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I'll even send them, um, labels like, like label maker, the simple ones, if they don't have a label maker, if, as long as they're in the U S like I'll just ship it. And it's, I'm not going to charge you like for a stamp and some right. labels, like, right. let me know what you want. I'll I print it. I send it and then you're good to go and you can do it. But if people want to get extra, there's like plenty of really amazing, like personalized label companies that I refer people to. So if they want that, That's like, cool that Pinterest perfect yeah. acrylic Script. label look yeah. you can get that too yeah. whatever you want is available for you but um but even those you know a couple bucks each and then things like look really uniform and extra sleek like it just it depends on what you want but sometimes the little upgrades can be worth it that's cool um so you know we're we're close to wrapping it I don't want to take too much of your time but what, uh, you know, what kind of plans do you have going forward? I mean, I know you kind of have, like you said, your 2021 set up um, and you can only be in one place. You can only do so much. I mean, do you, how do you plan to expand or how do you plan to, you know, grow um, this year? This year, I am really focused on growing my online community and just bringing people together so that I can, you know, like in the actual course, it's just like tips, 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 tips. And it's, I have everything in bite-sized chunks so people can actually go through the flow of the course, but then the community aspect too, so that people can ask questions, get them answered um, in real time. And then also with monthly, twice monthly calls. So I'm just really looking forward to bringing people together in that way and, and being able to help more people um, than ever through that community. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, you're definitely doing it. I always see you. You've been busy lately. I've seen you on different platforms uh, with other people. Um, and, you know, do you organize, do you like run your own social media, right? So you obviously, you know, um, you do all the branding for yourself or, or do you have anybody that kind of helps you out with that? Um, at the moment, I am doing it by myself. I have had people in the past who've helped out. Um, my last virtual assistant that was helping out with that. Oh gosh, it was probably like a year ago. And then she got a full-time job, so I had to let her go. Yeah. Um, and then I might I might have some help coming up soon too, but for now it's me. So um, I'm learning a, learning a lot as I go and it's it's good. I like it a lot. That's cool. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, you know, I started this podcast just because I was, you know, got sent home. It was summertime and, you know, I've, I've tried everything, right? I've tried all, I've had physical stores. I mean, I've, I've, I've done a lot of things and I've always wanted to be in media, you know, and I was like, okay, I want to do something. And, and, you know, then I just saw, I heard this clip on a podcast one day and it was like, no one's going to give you your dream job, right? You have to create your own dream job. And that just really resonated with me. And I was like, they're totally right. Like no one's going to call me just say, Hey bro, we're wondering if you wanted to, you know, cover this team and live in Hawaii. Like, no, that's not going to happen. Right. So <laughs> yeah. I, I had to create that for myself, you know? And I was like, okay, what if I do something that one will highlight people that are doing positive things. And it's honestly, because I know my students will maybe catch this one day. And I don't want, I had to keep it, you know, very uh, positive. And so because of that, it's like, okay, I got to do something that's not, you know, it's going to be positive. People can build off this. And I want my students to be able to uh, think that they can do whatever they want. And they definitely can, you know, and I'm like, I started my podcast from my phone and uh, I found an app and I just started recording. And I was like, I didn't even have a logo. I just used whatever it was there. And as I've been, and I'm still actually working on the branding right now, I'm trying to make this pivot, like you said. And so I've had people help me out, you know, sending me little things here and there. And now I have a microphone, now I have a light, you know, so little things like that, organizing the room. And I think it's just something that you kind of have to prove to yourself that you want to do it first before you go all in, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. I don't know, like, for instance, people want to sign up for a gym, but they're not ready to work out. Like they don't, they're not ready to give that time to go do it, you know, yeah. so it's easy to sign up, you know, but it's like, are you going to do it? Right. So. 
I kind of, my wife and I kind of, we signed up for a gym, we were doing it and then they closed it on us. And so we continued, I started to run, Mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't even buy running shoes. I just started running with whatever I had. And obviously that wasn't a good idea. I I got injured doing that. So then now now I have like three, four pairs of running shoes. Now we have running gear, you know, now, like I said, now we have our running bags, you know, and so we have our, you know, our things that we use. And I think it's something that you just have to get started. You know, you have to just do it and just go out there and do it. And then like, you kind of learn as you go, because if you just sit back and like, okay, I'm thinking of a business, I'm going to start, but you never actually implement it. Like you can only go so far, you know? So totally. And I think too, something that I wish I had known when I was younger, especially when I was like starting, uh, you know, just graduated high school and even in college, I feel like there was this pressure to figure out exactly what you want to do. And I didn't have that um, Mm -hmm. at all. I didn't really find that I liked what I was doing until I was, you know, an executive assistant and I was 30. Um, But the thing is, I mean, I started this at 35, like started and it was a brand new thing in a brand new, um, you know, brand new career path, but I have ended up using so many different, like teeny tiny little, um, you know, like little aspects of my past skills. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I'm like, why am I blanking? (laughs) Fill in the blank. Yeah. (laughs) Alex, help me. Um, but yeah, you end up using all these little skills that you gather along the way and you yes. never know where they're going to come from or how they're going to be. In, they're going to come in handy later. But um, if you if you're younger and you're not exactly 100 percent sure what you want to do, just keep going. You'll figure it out. And if you do, just like you said, start because yeah. you got to start sometime and you just got to got to be brave and just start putting yourself out there because you won't regret it. You'll learn and grow and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's definitely a, a running theme in my in my podcast episodes that number one is never too late, you know, and your sister's obviously an uh, example of that, you know, like she wants to get into teaching. It's like, it's never too late, man. I know teachers that went in at 50, you know, so it's never too late. You know, that's definitely one of the running themes. Definitely, we, you know, I talk about with different people that when you're so young, there's like this social society has like these, you know, these uh, pressures on you to like, hey, you know, uh, get married, you know, have kids, have a dog, you know, have the degree, all these things, have a house. And it's like, there's no timeline and there's just different paths that everyone can follow and, and do their own thing, actually create their own path. There's no, there's no path to follow. And another thing that we always talk about on these different podcast episodes um, is definitely just doing it, right? Like getting started and just, and, and it's also built, like everything you do, you're building your resume. Like you said, so you work for someone else, you learn some skills there. Or you probably had another high school job or a college job that you did as well. And you're, you know, I worked at a pizza place, you know, different things that I've done that are definitely helping me out today, you know, and, and this is probably not the end of the road for me. It's probably not the end of the road for you as well. Uh, we're just building our resume for the next thing and, and being able to be ready for the next, you know, challenge that comes up or whatever idea we have, you know, totally. totally. Yeah. So I appreciate your time. Um, go ahead and, you know, let the people know where they can find you and, you know, put your plug in right now. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me, Alex. This has been awesome. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Um, you can find me at tidyrevival.com or on Facebook or Instagram at Tidy Revival. Tidy Revival. Okay. And I'll put your, um, I put all your links in my episode notes. We'll get you out there and definitely, definitely be supporting you from here and uh, see what we could do later on in the future for sure. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, Alex. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you too. All right.